It's uh, Dave and Dale here again with Real Stories by Real Cops Inside the Line. Real Stories by Real Cops. Thank you for joining us. And uh, today, Dale and I are probably going to disagree, which is shocking. Although I'll say this, I think that it's safe to say at this point we know that if Dale and I disagree, it's only because he's wrong. There you go. We're going to talk about (laughs) guilt and innocence. Guilt and innocence. And um, let me tell you this. If you're a prosecutor and you want uh, want to get a conviction, put me on your jury. Guilty, guilty, guilty. That's my (laughs) mantra. You want a guilty guy to go free? Come see me, baby. (laughs) Yeah, you'll let the guilty go free. See? Got a law and order journalist and we've got a uh, bleeding heart liberal Cop. There you go. Let, let me let me t- test you first, Dave. I want to see where, you, where, you, where your mind's at. Kyle Rittenhouse, Kyle guilty Rittenhouse. or innocent? Kyle Rittenhouse. Got to say this. That'd be a really nice name for a refrigerator ma- manufacturer. Rittenhouse. <laughs> uh, Kyle Rittenhouse. We yeah. He's. We've talked about this before. Going into the area carrying a gun. I mean, but he did go to it. He went to a place that he, he went to a protest. He knew it might be violent. He brought a gun. His mommy dropped him off too. I know. His mother dropped him (laughs) off. Your mom used to drop you off at Boy Scout meetings and Little League games. Well, mostly I walked to those. (laughs) Oftentimes, oftentimes I would have to slip out of my, uh, my room, climb up, climb on the roof and go to the baseball games uh, because I was grounded. Here's the thing. I think he was not guilty. I, oh, really? We have what he was charged. We because, actually agree on that. Yeah. I, I figured we might. Going to the area, in t- in- intending to maybe commit violence. But of course, it's tough to say what your intent was. But when it actually came to when he pulled the trigger, he clearly was, I thought that it was- Under he, duress. Under being, duress. Under assault. He was under assault. They were okay. trying to kill him. It was kill, him. kill, kill Sex him. offenders were trying to kill him. Murderers were trying to yeah, kill him. Yeah, but he didn't know there were he didn't know there were murderers or sex offenders at the time. <laughs> you can just look at him and tell, Dave. That's a fascinating I'm thing. I'm looking across the, the table and saying, ah, he might be an offender. Dave might be an offender. We all might be offenders. Questionable. In the new world, we're all offenders. But yeah, in that case, he- what he what he did, obviously, he put himself in a position where somebody could get killed when he came to and we're going to go through a couple of scenarios like that today, oh, Dave. Good. So I can't good. believe that me and you agreed I know. that Rittenhouse is innocent. All right, let's get to the first one, Dave. All right. This is a warm-up. New Athens, Ohio, population around 300, little podunk town somewhere in Ohio. They did a worldwide search, and they came up, <laughs> <laughs> they came up with a new police chief, Sabin Ward, 21 years old, fresh Fresh out of high school, just learned to shave about three months ago. He's like an auxiliary cop in some other hick town, and he's the chief of police in that town. Give yeah, me a fucking they, they break. Just, they just named him chief of police. They were allowed a chief of police for what, uh, 18 months? Yeah, somewhere around. We don't, we don't know the reason why, but I'm sure he did something messed up. I, uh, I, have, I actually did. I saw this one online, and I thought, fascinating, but it's a small town. 320 people, according to the 2010 census or whenever it was, they seem mostly concerned about uh, traffic and keeping kids safe, those little kids safe from traffic in town. I don't want to get run over by a lawnmower or even worse. <laughs> uh, what are those things that they clean up the hay with? Well, you Bales of hay, a little <laughs> junior gets caught in a... A hay baler? Hay baler. A thresher. <laughs> a thresher. <laughs> you know, it sounds like really they're hiring a, 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 a traffic cop. Yeah, but you know, the cop. thing about it, Dave, and this is the thing about it. Yeah. The crime rate, I looked up the crime rate. Yep. Generally in Ohio, you have like a one in 300 chance of being the victim of some sort of a violent crime, an assault and battery, a sexual assault, a murder, worst case scenario. But in this part of Ohio, it's like one in 1,300. So crime isn't out of control. It's just nuisance crime, neighborhood yep. disputes and stuff like that. But what happens, Dave? Young child goes missing, abducted. Sure. Active shooter in the town, in in the school, or maybe in the hardware store or something like that. What do you do? A a, a suspicious death. Is is it a is it a suicide? Is it a drug overdose? Or is it a murder? And this kid, this 21-year-old kid, is the initial person who's gonna make the decision to either deal with it on his level or up at one ante to the state or the county, or the feds. Yep. So that type of situation, an inexperienced kid like that can fuck up a lot. Oh, Look what okay. happened. All We're right. just going to, I'm just briefly so going to say, say this. You're saying you think it's a bad idea that this guy was- Well, just kid look what happened in Uvalde, Texas. Yep. Small town, inexperienced police officers, the first time they had to step up and do something, yep. they fucked it up. 
Yeah. I'm not going to say anything more about that because it's been going on too long. All right. So let's, let me. So you're saying it was a, because of the of what happened to Uvalde that was kind of showcased the problems with that can come with inexperience and the fact that they hired. So therefore, it was a mistake to hire this inexperienced 21 year old to be the chief. You know something, Dave? He could be the best chief they've ever had. People could yeah. love him. Community policing. There's no crime in New Athens in the next year. He could be the best thing. But I think statistically and based on his age and inexperience and being in law enforcement where things can go from not so bad to really bad in a split second, I think they're rolling the dice with him. Okay, so you're saying bad hire. I'm saying that hopefully they're not going to be guilty of being ignorant. But right now, I think they're guilty of being ignorant. All right. So let me let me tell you. Misinformed. And you're asking me my opinion on yes. this? I think that when you're talking about a school shooter situation and you're caught talking about Uvalde, those, uh, the, the executive officers in that case, whichever one was in charge, the two that didn't know which one was in charge, uh, they were both older People. Yeah, they were in the 50s. Yep, you're right. And they you're had been right. trained. And they screwed up. And they messed up under pressure. You don't know, and I think this goes for soldiers. I think it goes for cops. It probably goes for firefighters. You don't know how, whether or not you have courage until it's really tested. Until under stress. Uh, not just under stress. I would say under- Life or death. Under life dealing or death with situation. Fear. Dealing with Absolutely. fear. I mean, real courage is not not being afraid of anything. It's 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 doing things even though you're afraid. This guy could show great courage and keep his head- well, he, Like I said, he could be, be the best police chief ever. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and again- we don't know what the pool of applicants was like. We don't know what the salary. Well, I, I was didn't like. get. A, I didn't get a call. I'm retired. I know. Well, no maybe, one called me. Maybe they did a. Maybe they did do a nationwide <laughs> search and they check you out. <laughs> but they. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think the idea of hiring a 21 year old guy to be the chief of police is kind of a weird thing. But it's a small town. I hope it's it works very, out. I really hope different. it works out. I think the kid the kid could be fine. I hope he's, yeah, same thing. I mean, we both hope he does well, but I, I don't think it's a bad hire. Yeah, I mean, even, I, even I if think there is an active shooter situation. What is it, like three kids in the school? <laughs> Maybe a couple of kids will die. <laughs> the hardware store is That's like three nice. guys working in the hardware well, store. But, but here's here's my point. If you hired somebody, let's say you hired, a, uh, let's say your chief of police is 56 years old. He's a he's a paper pusher. He's not good in the field or he was good in the field and he's been out of the field long enough that he's kind of lost it. Or he, maybe he's great in the field, but he's not good with command. Maybe he's not good at leading leading his uh, force or, or in, a, in a critical situation. I've been around a few guys like that. Yeah. I'm sure you have. And I'm sure, you know, <laughs> policing, I think policing is a lot like journalism, is that if you're a good reporter, they give you, they they bump you up till you become an editor. And then maybe you're a good editor and maybe you're a terrible editor. So you've probably never been an editor. I've been an editor a oh, few okay. times, but kidding. I would say I'd, I'd be the example of the person who was a terrible editor. <laughs> I didn't like yet to spell the words right. But, but I think that this, uh, so I think this kid... He could be great. He could not be great. You got to assume that they made the best choice that they had. Let me just leave it at this, Dave. Let's leave yeah. it at this. All right. Let's leave it at this so we I disagree. know you, you like to roam around every once in a while with your clothes not on. Yes. All right. You bet. Around right. here, Dave, you're going to get arrested in a half a second. I know. You go to I, New Athens, Ohio, not only are you probably not going to get arrested because there's only one cop on duty, <laughs> you're probably not even going to get victimized because it's one in 1,300 and there's only 300 people that live there. So there's no crime at all. Let so me you're tell you all this. set, Dave. As an Irishman with my pale, <laughs> pale white, translucent skin, they might consider me to be a traffic uh, traffic hazard if I'm walking around naked in New Athens. Ohio. Let me just, I'm so, going to give some advice to Sabin. I went on their website the other day. Yeah, it hasn't been touched in about eight years. They need to update the website. <laughs> That's it, the website or the Facebook page. The website. Okay. All right. The website. All right, Dave. You're all warmed up. I think. All right. Good. This is a big good. one. Brother. Finally, we disagree. Finally, we disagree. <laughs> a big one. Oh. Yeah, this okay. is a big one, buddy. Yep. This has been in the news. I love this case. So, I don't love the case, but I, I mind blowing. Go absolutely. ahead. Go so ahead. Upper Manhattan, New York, a few days ago, actually July 1st, Jose Alba, 61 years old. He's a proprietor of the store, a little convenience store. Austin Simon came in and assaulted him, subsequently was stabbed to death. But let me back up a little bit. Austin's girlfriend came in few minutes prior and tried to buy some potato chips with her welfare card. Yep. Commonly referred to as an EBT card. Didn't have enough money in it. No money in so, the EBT card. Jose Alba, the guy working behind the counter, the owner of the store, yep. said, sorry, no money, no chips. Yep. Told her to hit the road. They had a little bit of an argument. She said, I'm coming back with my boyfriend. He's going to fuck you up. Austin Simon comes back. There's a video of it. 
Austin, 30-year-old, very much in shape, pretty rugged street kid. Jose Alba, all of 65, or I mean, all of 61. 61. Yeah. He probably looks like he's in a little bit more, better shape than you, Dave, but he's still uh, that, 61. That's not, that's not an exclusive class. <laughs> he's struggling with Austin, potentially in fear for his life. There's some dialogue. He doesn't want to hurt anybody. At some point, Alba pulls on a knife and stabs Austin Simon in the chest and the neck. Simon subsequently dies. So what do you think happened? Oh, I, I know what happened. I've read this. I've read this, I read this case online. Now, did you agree? He, my was, he was arrested exploded. and charged with murder, yeah. second degree murder. Yeah. And they, they, they put him into Rikers for a week. Yeah, my father made, was at Rikers. He loved it. Yeah, well, yeah, he was everyone's bitch. Your, your dad may have been more comfortable in Rikers than this guy was. But here's the thing. You've got a, you know, I've lived in New York City. I lived down there. I lived there during the uh, late 90s when Rudy was in charge, Rudy Giuliani, before he lost his mind. And, I uh, disagree, but go ahead. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> but it was, it was safe. You know, New York was relatively safe. It was safe and it four was or five a, years ago. And it was a booming time for the economy and the city of New York and blah, 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 and all this other stuff. And, but it was still dangerous, but it was, it was safer. And now you've got a, a trend away from it. And and here's a guy who's trying to make a living, small businessman, probably owned the bodega. I knew both. I mean, I didn't know bodega, but I had experience with bodega office uh, owners. He probably wasn't that nice when he took the kids' kids away, uh, kids' chips away. He probably wasn't that nice about it. He probably, you know, dismissed her in kind of rude terms. The guy came in and the, by the way, they didn't say boyfriend. That wasn't the term. You well, they didn't say it boyfriend. No, okay. They used another word that started with an N. I'm going to bring my N here to, oh, to, okay. to F you up um, as one of the papers put it. So this guy, Austin uh, Simon, comes in with the intention to fuck this guy up. Yep. He he goes behind the counter. He I, I, I don't know how he got behind the counter, frankly, because the bodegas that I He's remember- He's a criminal. They know how to pick locks, Dave. Well, yeah, there might not have been a door, <laughs> but he managed to get inside the door and he's, thro- so he's, he's throwing the guy around, uh, pushing him around. And again, by all the stories that I saw on the videotape, I saw on it. And I know sometimes there's a, there's a side of the story you don't see. What is the guy supposed to do? Well, let me, he's, let been me backed little... in, he's been backed into a corner by a guy who is beating him up, is much bigger than him. And as it turns out, has what, 27 uh, arrests or 27 oh, arraignments? Yeah, only or 27. I mean, he probably got away with about 50, but they found him 27 times. It's, let me just give you a little yeah. insight on the law. Yeah. This may help you oh, make, make your decision. How, how about this? Alvin Bragg. This is I, I want to get this guy's name in. Oh, okay. District Attorney Alvin Bragg. He's the guy. I get it. We hear what people say to the press. We don't know what the whole story is. Maybe there's more to it than this, or maybe there isn't. It just seems to me like you're telling every small businessman and every person who lives in a play in a condo uh, in this city in New York that you're responsible for. Basically, you're saying you can't fight back. You're at the whim at the whim, whim of and all the, the will mad men of all the mad men criminals. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. So you were saying? I was saying the, the law in New York, the self-defense law, just, just a brief little sentence. A person can only use deadly force to defend themselves if they reasonably believe the person they're defending themselves from is about to use deadly force. Right. Me and you are going to disagree a little bit on this. All right. We're going to disagree. You believe. So you think that this, you think that this murder charge is justified I don't based think, on what you're reading? Not murder. Just looking at the video and yes. The guy was 61. He was elderly. Yes, the deceased, Mr. Simon, was very fit, 30-year-old, and he obviously could have kicked the guy's ass. And bigger. And, and bigger. bigger. Well, well, he, 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 wasn't, he you know, was bigger in size, but not in weight. He was, he was... Dave, you got 40 pounds in me. I think I can take you out front and whoop your ass. I'm just kidding, yeah, Dave. You think you can. You think you can. Good luck with that. But anyway, I, I don't know that he had the right to use a knife just because he's losing a fight. That's just my law enforcement perspective. Okay. All right? So you're saying... That if I've got a business and you come in spoiling for a fight and putting a severe hurt on me. Well, maybe and then using you, my fist, though. Then, right. And then you proceed to come around the counter into my back room. I have no way to escape from you. You shove me against, shove me, and then you hit me, and then you shove me again. I don't have any right to defend myself. You, you using absolutely a have a right to defend I've yourself. I've got no way out. Can I, you pull a knife and stab him four yeah, or five times? Yeah. That's what they're going to have to determine. A juror is going to have to determine that. If it goes to trial, it's, maybe the charges will get dropped. I don't know. It, 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 it I made think it's, my, it's a it, tough case. It made my head explode because oh, really? I don't see. I don't think it's a tough case at all. The guy had no back door. He had no way to escape from, from this. This guy was, much, was, in my opinion, from what I could see, he was bigger than him. He was stronger than him. He was more experienced in, fight, in fighting than him. And his intention was to 
put a really bad hurt on this guy. And no, I, I agree the, with the, that. The victim, the victim, in my opinion, was the bodega owner who hadn't, he, he couldn't escape. And so basically you could, you convict this guy. This wasn't vigilantism. This wasn't a bodega owner chasing the woman down the street and shooting her or, or shooting the woman or shooting this guy even. No, I know. This I know. was the guy basically standing over. Keep you're talking, Dave, because I was 50-50. Now I'm 75-25. I, I'm amazed we disagree on this. I'm amazed <laughs> we, we disagree, disagree a little this. bit. I'm amazed we disagree. You're, I, I, you're basically I think, sending the message to every single person who lives in New York City that you were at the whim. Well, of you're the bad also man. sending a message to a certain group of people. Hey, if you're losing a fight, fuck it, just stab them yeah, and yeah. beat them, beat them to death with a baseball well, yeah, bat. I know, and, and I know that you're going to say that you. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so I know it, the it's a tough analogy. one, Dave. It, it's definitely tough. I have no sympathy for criminals, none whatsoever. If, if you and I are out in the none street, none whatsoever. If you and I are out in the street, and I'm sure you've answered this call, where you've got mutual combatants. Yes. And one of them is getting beaten, and the tide swings away from person A, and so person A picks up a weapon, and so now all of a sudden you you come in, and person B has got blood all over him because person A has got the weapon, but person A was losing. But as mutual combatants, how do you how do you make the call on that? That's case? a t- if if it's just let's just say it's two people at a bar, yep. twenty year old kids at a bar, they're drunk, having a fist fight. Sure, one gets knocked down, gets up, gets knocked down again. Maybe the fight's halfway over. They're arguing. The kid pulls out a knife and stabs him. That right there, what I just described to me as a cop showing up on that scene because you're losing a fight yep. and you got embarrassed and people are laughing at you. Doesn't give you a right to pull a right. knife out. Now, same yeah. or very similar scenario, same bar, same combatants. The kid's pounding his head against the wall or, or, or a rock or something, kicking him, and he's almost unconscious, and his teeth are falling out, and yeah. he pulls a knife out of his back pocket, and he stabs him because he in, he's in fear that he's going to be killed. Yeah. Different scenario. Yeah. I don't know that the bodega owner was in fear that he was going to be killed. I don't know yeah, that. But they weren't mutual combatants. They Absolutely. weren't mutual I know combatants. Yep. This guy had no back entrance, uh, a back exit. He had no escape from this. The only way he was going to escape from a beating that could have been fatal was to stab the guy. And so he stabbed the guy. You want to know how we can wrap this one up? How's that? You gonna how- I, I tell you how you could change your opinion. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm 90-10 in your favor, <laughs> Dave. Okay. But I, it, it's a kind of a, a tight rope to walk that because there are people out there that'll that'll exploit that and just all the mad stabbers are just going to have free reign of stabbing people. Right. But we we could we could all they've got to do is lure them all they've got to do is lure them <laughs> into their stabbers. back rooms, come lure them behind the counter and then they can mad stab. You know something them. like I said, 10 minutes prior to this whole incident happening, all he had to do was give the welfare yeah. mummer a bag of chips. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But I, I've got to say, like I said, I've lived in New York. I've seen bodega owners. I know that their whole business is this kind of, you know, how much how much shoplifting can they prevent? How much shoplifting is Yeah, I know. I got you. And, and I, I'm really not a hundred. I'm not serious about just giving yeah. the chips up because no. if that's oh, the listen, case, you oh, just listen. give everything up. Here's the thing. Giving the chips up to a, to a kid in the neighborhood. If you've got a relationship with people in the neighborhood and you've got a kid and, you know, that's one thing. But it's not a reason to come down. Yeah, when an it's adult a, come down, they're probably drunk and they're all crap. Act out and they just they're just trying to be bullies. Completely if they're even if they're completely sober, it just doesn't give you the These the, are two bullies, the lady and the guy. Yeah. They're two bullies, two thugs. I'm gonna and say thugs. they got it handed right. to them. Yeah. They, they, they messed thugs. with the wrong guy. And and this woman, by the way, you didn't I did did you mention this since she was she stabbed? Oh yeah, she, she had a knife on her She too, stabbed yeah. the bodega owner during the fight. And she's walking free. And that's she ain't got amazing. no money though, because her welfare cards are depleted. <laughs> 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 if it's her card. But all right, all right. I don't think by the way. The stabbing during, you know, during the fight, her reaching over and stabbing. I'm not sure if that's something she should be prosecuting for, for but bringing the guy in to beat up the guy. Is it conspiracy? Yeah, there's a whole yeah. bunch. There's a whole bunch of crimes going on there. It's, it's. I'm glad that they this. have Alvin Bragg, top district attorney. That's a joke. <sighs> that's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, he's that's uh, unbelievable. I guess his George Soros, who's that guy that buys off all the prosecutors? Uh, you know, all right, Dave, we're not going to get into Soros, that. Soros, Soros. All right, let's go to an easier one yeah. for you, Dave. Let's just say that this is one guy, and, <laughs> and who knows if he'll be reelected, but boy, oh boy, that's a. All right, all right we'll go I'm to. Gonna, I'm going to slow it down a little oh, bit. Oh, good. You. Slow it down for you. Used to be a sports writer. I'm all wound up now. All right. I'm all wound up. Slow it down. You got a few brain cells left. We got two more. All right. So you must know Brittany Griner. 
I've heard about it. I, one of the best female basketball players, at least in America, if yeah. not in the world. Well, she was over in Russia, and yeah. she's still in Russia. Yes. In February, she was trying to leave Russia at the airport, and she had some weed on her, marijuana, which is illegal in Russia. Yeah. You can yeah, it was assassinate like a, your political foes, but you can't have weed <laughs> leading, leaving the airport. So she has been arrested. She's been locked up and she has subsequently pled guilty. And she is potentially looking at 10 years in a Russian prison for something that is just so minute. But before we go any further, Brittany, if you're listening... How does that national anthem sound oh, now? Man. How does that yeah. sound now? Pretty this good. Is, you kind of love this it, is, don't this you? Is, this, I've got to tell you this. <laughs> Brittany Griner, her case has been kept alive by all these idiots on social media who are who are trashing her over the fact that she didn't like uh, or, or she had a strong stance about the national anthem and about the protest. Yeah, she the doesn't deserve what she's getting. Because being African-American... She feels that maybe there's been mistreatment. But of course, I say to this, I say, you know, this is, isn't this what we defend? Don't we defend free speech? Yeah, we, then there's she gets, no reason why she should be in yeah. prison. And, and, and the, the marijuana bus she got, first of all, uh, very sm- it was like a va- vaping or something like that. Some some marijuana it was nothing. oil. It was just, you know, one of those is in, in, in law enforcement or just in, in anything. If they want to get you, if someone wants to get you, yep. they want to arrest you, they want to put you, they, they want to lock you up, whatever they want to do. There's so many minute little things that corrupt people, corrupt law enforcement people, yep. corrupt judges, corrupt politicians can do yep. to nail someone. And that's exactly what they did. It just so happened to coincide with the invasion of, what's that country? Ukraine. Ukraine. Yeah. Just so, kind of right yeah. around the same time. Right around the time that we were trashing their country from the U.S. and, and diplomatic, uh, the diplomat, uh, yeah, Russia was getting uh, hammered. So she's, she's pretty much a pawn. They're, obviously, they're looking to you know trade something? her in for someone else. But, but here's the thing. The butcher she, of Moscow, is, is, isn't he locked up in one of our prisons? She ha- What's that? <laughs> the butcher, <laughs> the, of, the Moscow. butcher of Moscow. <laughs> Did you trade him? <laughs> here's the thing about her. I know, because you were, you were in the embassy. I, w- I lived in Moscow. If you're, I understand that she could, so she could could it would it be planted could it be pl- could it have been planted first of all it could have been I okay. think I think she well, probably admitted to that it probably wasn't it could, okay. absolutely could let's, have been planted let's let's say that it wasn't uh, let's say that she brought it in she's got to have I don't know how old she is she's twenties she's got to have so. balls of steel she's got to have no brain <laughs> or she's got to and I, I mean I mean no brain in the way that you and I had no brain when we were in our twenties and well, you just do stupid things you know something Dave when when I lived in Moscow literally every Moscow and Poland I yeah. lived in both of them. Communist countries back in, in, in the 80s. A day didn't go by when we weren't reminded. When you go out in town, you act appropriate. You act polite. Yes, sir. No, sir. Don't be jaywalking. Don't yeah. be doing anything. Don't yeah. be stealing a piece of chocolate from some little rinky-dink Moscow grocery store. You go from point A to point B. Do what you have to do. Don't say anything to anybody and get back on the embassy compound because every time you're off the American property at the embassy, yep. you're subject to being potentially harassed, yep. potentially be, being arrested because you're a pawn in a political game. And if they grab you for something very minute, jaywalking or something stupid like that, you could be locked down. And guess what? The American government may or, not, may, or may not be able to get you out. And in this situation... It looks like they're not being able to get her out right. for whatever well, reason. They say now that she's she's pled guilty, which she had to do, and now they're going to trade her for some sort of a prisoner exchange, one of our Russians oh, for Reiner. Yeah. And and hopefully she'll come in and she will be un, unharmed. The butcher of Moscow, getting released. Is that who's being released? <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> I don't know. Who was it who used to tell you that every day? Was it the same person who used to say, say don't do this, don't do this, don't do this? It was, believe it or not, I was one of the people sergeants. You were one of the sergeants. Yeah, I was one. I was, there was four of us who were in charge of certain platoon, the embassy. It was me telling people, and then it was my boss reminding me to tell the guys under me because we don't well, want any problems. This. It would have been good if you or your boss had been in Moscow to tell yeah. Brittany Griner, don't be stupid. What what I don't can tell- carry this stupid stuff with you in your luggage because you're going to get you're going to get caught and you're going to wind up in, in jail. When Brittany gets out, yeah. I'm going to call. I'm going to say, Brittany, Dale Lawrence, I lived in Moscow. I, I would have told you. Don't leave. Try to leave the country with weed. It wasn't even weed. It was weed related story, products. Dave. I'm sorry. I want to suggest to her yep. that she goes and plays for the Egyptian team. <laughs> I because know. Because I know this. When I was leaving Egypt, 
Yep. I had a bag full of pyramid rocks that I absconded <laughs> from a few weeks earlier at the pyramids of Giza. I grabbed three or four rocks. Did you? I, did you? Did you actually grab them from the site, or did you? I bribed a fully them? paid military member of the <laughs> <laughs> of the Egyptian military. They were a crack crew, Dave. <laughs> but yeah, I was leaving the airport, and I was leaving there to, to go to Germany. For my next post. And they opened my luggage. They pulled me aside. They opened my luggage and they went through it and they found the pyramid rocks. And I was speaking to the guy. I spoke a little Arabic. So I was speaking to him in Arabic mm-hmm. and I showed my diplomatic passport and I kind of mentioned, hey, would 10 to 15 American dollars make me uh, be able to jump on that airplane and make this all go away? <laughs> and they said, yes, sir, you're all set. And I gave a few bucks. We packaged everything back up and I got on the airplane and I have those pyramid rocks in my house right now, Dave. That's so, uh, Brittany, that's where you want to go. Just pay them off. And what if she had tried <laughs> to bribe the guards in Moscow? Oh, you, she would have been done, brother. Yeah. Oh, she would have been done. Yeah, that would have been. She's definitely uh, guilty of being stupid, but she's not. They, they shouldn't be doing that to yeah. her. And and by stupid, we mean the stupid that you are when you're. When you're young and, when and you think 20. that in America, She's a big, you know, a popular athlete, and she probably has been given breaks her whole life. And she's probably thinking, hey, you know, I'm a popular athlete in Moscow, too. Maybe they're just going to give me a break. And she probably didn't think anything of it. So we agree on that one, too? I agree that she's definitely innocent, other than just being guilty of being young and naive. Yeah, I'll go with that. And I'll maybe add quite possibly poorly advised. Absolutely. We're, We're agreeing too much. Yeah, I know it, Dave. We got to find one. Right. Uh, well, this is this this is a good one, Dave. All right, all right. So you're all warmed up again. This is our last. Is this our last? This one? This is the last one, okay. Dave. We're trying to keep these podcasts down to 45 minutes. You went to a big training seminar, and they said, "Hey, keep it down to 45 minutes, and you might get more that's, listeners." That's that's one of the things they said. <laughs> so that's we're at 32 minutes and 13 seconds right now. Okay. All right. So in Baltimore, July 7th. Just to give you a little insight in Baltimore, the Murder rate in the U.S. as of 2021, 6.9 people per 100,000 will be murdered. For every 100,000, you get six to seven murders. In Baltimore, for every 100,000 people, you get 58 murders. I'm not good at math, but that's about eight or nine times more than the actual national average of murders. So Baltimore in and of itself is a shithole. I've been to Baltimore a few times. I've been lost in Baltimore. I was in fear for my life. I would never go back. I, whenever I travel, I never get off the highway in Baltimore. However, an individual by the name of Timothy Reynolds, he's from that area. He was driving through the Inner Harbor. That's a nice area. Yeah. It's a very, it's a wealthy area, a lot of shops, a lot of normal people, other than the squeegee kids. These are the kids when you stop at a stop sign or, yep. or, or a red light, a bunch of kids will come up to your car with squeegees. They'll spray water on the windshield or the back window. Okay. They'll clean your windows. It's always a good thing to have clean windows, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> he got a little upset. He pulled his car over. He walked out of his car with a baseball bat. There is some confusion whether he had the bat over his head, like he was going to swing at someone. There is some confusion whether he hit someone. There's two different stories. He didn't hit anyone, and he hit someone. So we don't know what the whole story is. Other than that, he confronted four or five squeegee kids. One of them had a handgun, shot him five times, killed him. So somebody did wash his windshield. Probably. Either they they, they they were. They're very aggressive. Yeah. They'll just wash your windshield and they'll ask you for a bucket or two. And if you don't give it to them, they might kick your car. They'll swear at you. They'll call you a name. They'll do something to kind of provoke yeah. you or yeah. or at least intimidate you into giving them a dollar or two. Okay. But we're only talking a dollar or two? That's about it. Yeah. And then this guy basically, so the question then becomes, what's the question? What's, the, what's your question? Well, the, is it, the, is the it issue, murder? This is the issue, Dave. Yeah. Are those kids, or at least one of those five little squeegee kids, going to be charged with murder because they shot the guy? Or did Mr. Reynolds, who came out of his car just because he was upset that they were, you know, trying to embezzle money or intimidate money out of his pocket, comes at him with a baseball bat. So is it self-defense? Is it self-defense? Are are they going to claim self-defense? Did he make a very grave mistake? Did he actually precipitate his his own victimization by coming out with a bat? My opinion, first of all, should never have gotten out of his car in a situation like that. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Gets out of his car with a baseball bat 
You yeah. know, these are the kids. These are the kids that are from the inner city, from the neighborhoods yeah. where kids are getting killed and people are getting shot every day. 180 homicides in Baltimore as of yesterday. So this guy should have been smart enough. He should have had enough street sense to not do that. So in my opinion, he kind of put himself in a situation. And I think there's an argument that these kids, or at least one of these kids, can claim self-defense. You I'm think thinking so? he's guilty of being a nitwit. The victim is guilty of being making a very, very bad, possibly spontaneous decision that ended his life. I think probably this is a road rage incident gone wrong. Any of these kids had an option. If you're getting out of your, your car and you're, you're approaching kids on a sidewalk, when I was 14, I was the, probably about as slow a runner as you could find, but there was not an adult in the world. If they came out after me because I threw a snowball at their car, there was no way they were going to catch me. And so the idea that these kids couldn't have run away is... But these aren't the type of kids that, that will run away. That doesn't these matter. are kids under, who protect their own turf. Right, but That's under, the mentality of these kids. Right, but what does the law say about it? Is it yeah, stand the your, law is, says. I mean, is this stand your ground that extends no, it's not beyond the ground. beyond the house to your si- to the sidewalk near your house in your neighborhood in your turf? If you have the right, most self defense laws, most will say if you have the ability to retreat. Yes, which they all had. Then they you have to exercise the retreat had. option. Yeah, this is where I, I we're disagreeing on this. We're disagreeing. They have. Yeah, they, it's, they, another, it's another tough one, Dave. It's no, it's a, not a tough one. They, well, by, you're, you're saying, well, the, the, the context of it is that they won't retreat because this is their turf. So what? They're thugs. They shot I know the they guy. are, Dave. I'm they not sticking up the for guy. thugs. This guy came at him with a bat. He shouldn't have done it. That was a dumb thing to do. I'm saying that these guys, if they've got the chance to, to escape, then they should have chosen that first. Under the law, under every law I know, there's got to be, if you've got, an, if you've got an option to escape, isn't that also true with stand your ground? I mean, isn't it stand your ground that if you've got a back entrance? that Well, I mean, you know, if someone comes into your house, Dave, it's two in the morning and, and you're in your house with your wife and your daughter or your girlfriend and your daughter and, and you can't. You may have three back entrances, but if they're blocked by the madman in your hallway, then you have the absolute right to defend yourself. All right, let's say this. You don't have the right to chase them down the street and a yes. hundred yards later shoot okay. them. You don't have that right. But do you have the but do you have to think about escape first? I think that in most instances, and if you look historically at, at those type of crimes, yep. They'll look, take everything in perspective. Right, but we're talking about somebody. Yeah, yeah but we're most, talking about somebody. In your own house. Even, even in stand your ground, the strictest stand your, stand your ground is, laws. It's usually in your house. It's your house. Yeah. Not on the street corner. No, it's not on the not street corner. Not somebody was coming at me with a baseball bat. In, in the middle of and, a field in Kansas, and I could have kept on running. Yeah, absolutely not. Yeah. This these, is, this, these it's kids, another tough one, though. No, it's not a tough well, one. I think these, these kids, kids I think being, be being from the hood, yep. being street kids, probably going to be an easy conviction. Sure. I would think. This is, I see this as a case where somebody could go to jail. But guess what? They could, haven't found him yet. It could be the right kid. It could be the wrong kid. But if they want somebody, this is one of those cases where it, they're not going to get an ID unless they can find, they're not going to get a positive ID unless they can either squeeze somebody for an ID or they've got video somewhere. Well, funny you say that because I, I was reading and they were talking about video. There's a lot of video in Baltimore, but I think some of the main video cameras that actually captured the assault yep. as of a few days ago were obscured by tree limbs. Oh, those leaves. Those leaves. Those leaves. Yeah, that's the reason why they're going to get away. You might not be able to identify yeah. them, but they, I think they'll be able to identify them maybe a quarter mile down the street when they see the same kids running, a group of kids running a half mile down the street, and they'll identify them from that right. location saying they came from where the person was shot. So you have a lot of trust so in Dave, law enforcement. I hope you learn from this. You always want to commit a heinous crime in the middle of summer where all the leaves are on the trees <laughs> so no one can see through on the cameras. I'll keep that in you mind. You start killing people in the fall, this Dave. You're going to get caught. Problem. This is ruining my life right now. <laughs> there are so many people and there's so much crime I'd like to commit. There are so many people that I'd like to Do kill. it in the I've fall. Got, I've got a long... <laughs> I mean, do it in the summer. Do it in the summer. Something you never know where the cameras are. No, sometimes don't. the cameras you know. are low. Sometimes the cameras are high. Sometimes there's body cameras. Sometimes there's car dash cameras. It's oh, terrible. It's everywhere, Dave. Just don't. How about we do this? Just don't commit crime. You ain't have to worry about some jury I've actually, finding you guilty or innocent. You know something? That's where we agree because I put a moratorium on all my illegal activity until I can figure out this camera thing. What do we? What do we disagree on? We disagreed on the last one. We disagreed on the bodega. A little bit, yeah. Uh, not on Brittany Griner. No, no, I, no, I, I think and, I think she's a young lady that's being um, 
uses oh, a pawn. Oh, she's absolutely. Both governments. She's, yeah. She's, you know, somebody should have advised her. No. Yeah. You know, throw that away. You're a professional athlete. You make plenty of money. Buy yourself a new bong or whatever it was that she had, you know, when you get to the state. I wonder if she's learned the uh, Russian national anthem yet. <laughs> well, this will be the thing. Uh, they probably, she, I bet you in prison in Russia, they wake them up at five in the morning and they play the national anthem. Everyone do they says, really? I bet you they do. I don't know that for a fact. I've never been in a Russian prison. But okay. I bet you they do. Just All right. like in China. That's what they do in China? Absolutely. Have you been do. in a Chinese prison? No. <laughs> but I just believe it because as Tucker Carlson said it happens. Oh, if <laughs> Tucker Carlson said Dave. it had it. I'm about ready to wrap it up, Dave. All right. I'm Dave Radigan. That's Dale Lawrence. We've been inside the line. Real stories by real cops. Uh, if you uh, if you disagree with us, feel free to send us an email at uh, realstoriesbyrealcops at gmail.com. And if you agree with us, Feel free to let us know at realstoriesbyrealcops at gmail.com. And uh, thanks for listening. Dale, anything else to say? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to just kind of throw my resume out there. If you're a defense attorney and you're looking to get one of your clients off, give me a call. If you're a prosecutor and you're looking to get one of your one of the defendants <laughs> found guilty, give me a call. I can swing either way on this, Dave. Juror for hire, <laughs> Dale Lawrence. Thanks, everybody. See you next week.